interesting to see how um, exchanges keep evolving in this uh, space. So, um, you know, uh, Bitstamp, for example, um, might be evolving in the wrong direction. <laughs> the reports coming out that they might be restricting fiat withdrawals um, for like large Bitcoin companies who want to with withdraw U.S. dollars, and like you know, telling it's delaying them. It's uh, uh, tacking on huge fees to withdrawals, like between forty and eighty dollars, and you know, basically being really shady about dollar withdrawals kind of in the same way that Mt. Gox started being w really shady with withdrawals um, late last year which inevitably led to their collapse so now we see that Bitstamp might be going down this path as well and some people are calling for another um, proof of reserves audit for Bitstamp they, they had one earlier this year and they passed the audit but um, you know this with recent developments and fiat withdrawal restrictions we might need another audit of Bitstamp as well because they are starting to act a little bit shady about withdrawals. And it might be because of KM, uh, um, know your customer, um, anti-money laundering stuff that they're afraid of, of, of that. But like, even then, if, if you have established customers who've been, you know, working with the exchange for a while and they're having difficulty taking out their money, um, like, why can't the exchange give it to them immediately? It might be because they don't have the money at that moment because they're doing shady stuff with their reserves. Yeah, I saw about this on Reddit the other day. It was a guy who, uh, he, like, ran a Bitcoin business and he used Bitstamp as his exchange. Um, and he was trying to, like, he said he had never had any problems up until this point. He tried to withdraw some of money uh, from the exchange and Bitstamp said, "Well, we can't do it. We can't. We can't allow Bitcoin businesses at all to withdraw any fiat. I think it was from our exchange due to some kind of law. I can't remember what excuse they gave. Um, and then I saw another one. Uh, it wasn't a business owner, um, but it was an individual. He said, if I remember correctly, he said he had about seven bitcoins in a Bitstamp wallet." And he tried to withdraw them, and um, and the you know the the transaction wouldn't process with the exchange. Wow. And he con he contacted uh, customer support, um, and it's been a month, and the issue still hasn't been resolved, and they're just not letting him have his money. So that's not good. Yeah. So you know these two stories, pretty pretty bad omens. You know, maybe they maybe Bitstamp is going Gox. Who who knows? Yeah, going Gox. <laughs> That's a new new phrase. Bitstamp going Gox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not funny at all. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is, but you know, uh, for the wrong reasons. Well, I mean, like when Mount Gox crashed and all those people lost their money, like. I was one of the people who saw that coming like a mile away. Like I was following the Mount Gox developments ever since you know, middle of last year when, when problems first started arising. And, um, I, I did use Gox. Like when I very first started getting involved in Bitcoin, I used them to buy Bitcoin, like through, through a third party service, like Dwala or something that I used to put in dollars for my bank or something. So I used them a little bit, but once start stuff started coming out, like they're doing shady stuff about withdrawals. Like I ain't risking holding my <laughs> Bitcoins on there at all. You can't rely on some random, you know, freaking exchange from Japan uh, to to hold your money. You know, they don't make, don't believe any promises they make because uh, they aren't, they, they just might lie. Uh, if you don't hold your private keys, then you don't hold your Bitcoin. So, like, yeah. now we see the same problems happening with Bitstamp. People got to see the writing on the wall, you know, make decisions based on that and and you know make decisions for for best of you and the best of your bitcoins yeah you never use an exchange as a bank right like that's the whole point of bitcoin is to one of the points of bitcoin is to eliminate the necessity of banks you can you can securely hold your money on your own without trusting anybody else so the you know the just the the idea that people would even think about using their exchange wallet as their primary, you know, storage space, like, 
it just seems really dumb to me. Yeah, it's bad. Like, like, like I'm maybe it's maybe it's because I'm you know fairly new to the Bitcoin world. I, I've only known about Bitcoin since 2012, and I didn't become you know really convinced about it until early this year. Um, you know, so after the Mount Gox thing already happened, so I really like you know kind of caught wind of it, and then and you know in the news and online on Reddit and things like that. Yeah. So maybe it's just because. I came in after all that happened, so it seems like common sense to me. But you know, like I've, I would never leave my bitcoins in an exchange wallet. You know, the only time I put any bitcoin in an exchange wallet is when I put it in my Coinbase wallet to sell it, and um, you know, and I sell it as soon as a transaction is confirmed. As soon as it gets six confirmations, I sell it, and it leaves my wallet and goes into my bank account. So, yeah. I just don't get why people would do that. It's just a bad idea. Yeah, you always, you always want a desktop wallet. I mean, that's where you keep your bitcoins, or a paper wallet, or a Trezor, or whatever. Just don't yeah. keep it on. Or a exchange. phone wallet. You know, even yeah. that is better. Yeah. It seems like it's not as who... safe, but it's safer than an exchange wallet because you still have full control over it. Yeah, it's like people who keep a lot of money on exchanges just sitting there for for an extended amount of time. It's like they're totally ignorant to what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin, you know. It's that the, they just they just see it as like a just an investment vehicle. So why would they keep their investment on anything besides the site where they're making the investments? Like it's yeah. they're totally ignorant to what makes Bitcoin an amazing um, decentralized uh, currency that requires no trust in anyone else. But they willingly put the trust in exchanges anyway. It's, it's yeah. weird. But what really baffles me is that, uh, you know, people, a lot of people keep all their Bitcoins on these exchange wallets, but they don't even get anything out of it. Um, like they, they give up full ownership over their money and they're subjecting themselves to the risks of, of getting their funds lost or stolen. Um, you do the same thing with a bank with your fiat, but at least at a bank you get interest on your deposits, you know? Sometimes. Um, yeah. Like, but you don't even get that with an exchange vault. There's literally no incentive to keep your bitcoins on an exchange, and I just don't understand why people do it so yeah. much. And they it's keep like, a lot of money too. Like that one guy had seven bitcoins in there. Yeah, and, and it's not that hard to transfer it to a secure wallet on your computer. It, it works just like an exchange wallet, except you have full control over it. Yeah, and it's not gonna. It's. <laughs> It's not going to be taken by anyone. It's not going to be lost in, in a hacking attempt or something, which are still going on. There's still hacking attempts all the time, and some yep. hacking attempts are successful. So we still know that exchanges are points of vulnerability, basically. It's like, you know, people, it's not that hard. The transaction fee is five cents. I mean, come on, just pay five cents to secure your Bitcoins in a, in a local wallet. It's... It should be common sense, really, for everyone at this point. Yeah, and, you know, the only, the, the biggest obstacle you face or the biggest risk you face when you have full control over your own money is you doing something stupid and losing it. Like, my like my biggest fear is me doing something really stupid and locking myself out of my wallet or losing my bitcoins or something. You know, but at least I don't have to worry about somebody stealing my money from an exchange. You know, or at least I don't have to worry about a Mark Carpola's junior, you know, taking everything from me. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm responsible for my own money, and that's you don't have to worry be. about your money going gox. Yeah, and that's that's how it should be. I don't, yeah. I don't get it. Maybe hopefully people will come around. I mean, obviously they are. They're starting to lose trust in the exchanges. Yeah. Um, Maybe we need another gox to teach those people a lesson again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be really bad, but. Who knows? That might be what has to happen. Yeah, it's 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 just you know people um, you know delegating their personal responsibility away from themselves, and 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 trusting someone else to hold their money, uh, who who might run away with it or get attacked and and lose it. If you are if you if you take personal responsibility into holding your own coins, then that. You know, we mentioned the learning process earlier. That's also part of the learning process. It's like learning how to secure your own Bitcoins um, using wallets that um, uh, are, are secure, that um, are useful as well to, for holding your money. Um, and, you know, tr tr trusting 
in that case, like you're, you're trusting the software developers to write good code. Um, you're trusting all the people who look at that open source code on GitHub, um, which, which, you know, I'd rather, I would much rather put my trust in very intelligent um, software developers who make useful um, apps and products. I'd rather put my trust in, in them than um, trust in a website of uh, of 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 some guys, you know, some guys who built this website in Slovenia or whatever, which is where Bitstamp, Bitstamp is, and trusting them not to just take everyone's coins randomly, or trusting them to have security, uh, um, uh, cyber security enhancements to prevent, you know, another gox from happening. And it's like. I guess, you know, people like Ben Lasky went to force exchanges to, you know, have the ultimate in security and all this stuff. But, uh, you know, I don't, that's, that's too much trust for me. I don't want to trust get regulators. I don't want to trust exchanges. I, I would rather trust myself and software developers and the awesome apps that they, that they create for holding Bitcoins. Yeah, these, these wallet providers, you know, their entire business is based on keeping your Bitcoin safe. Uh, you know, the exchanges, they have a small security team within this whole huge business, which is mostly just, you know, buying and selling things. So, you know, it's definitely worth it to learn how to use a desktop wallet because it's much safer. It's really not that hard to use. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... Also, you got to keep in mind that exchanges are only temporary if if Bitcoin goes all the way. So um, mm, that's a good point. At, so you know, at some point, you're going to have to learn how to use a wallet. You know, better sooner rather than later, right? 